with you today. I'm here with Tina B. from TikTok and um, I'm a disability and student educator on Instagram and today we're going to be talking about Instagram. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you so much for having me on and I appreciate it so much. Um, like she said, I am Tina B. I'm a disability inclusion educator and I have done a lot of different videos on TikTok and my Instagram is really where I share a lot of our journey and our story and some practical tips and ideas for how to teach inclusion. Nice. Okay. So I have my question right here. Let me dash my computer up. Um, so my first question is, I know you are being an advocate for promoting disability in students. Can you, can you explain your journey when it comes to promoting disability in students and being a happy mom? Yes, so my journey um, of doing this disability inclusion actually started last um, May, so it's almost been a year, and I really just started to see that people didn't understand how to interact or um, treat my daughter Noel. Um, she is 13 and she's diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, so she's in a wheelchair, um, she has a trach, she's on a ventilator. And when we'd go out in public, people would be really shy of her and not know how to interact. And what's hard for her is that, you know, she's 13 and she wants right. friends, she wants to talk to people. And I started to realize that I think the reason that people don't know how to do it is because they haven't been taught. And I started to look around and I realized there's not many people teaching and there's not many, you know, curriculums or things that you learn in school just to, to teach you how to be friends with somebody who's different and has a disability. Um, and I realized there's a lot of character education at school, but there wasn't any disability inclusion education. And so I decided that I was just going to start teaching it. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's how I ended up doing what I do now because I don't have a mental disability. I only have a physical disability, and I'm uh, so tired of people assuming things that weren't true. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna start my own YouTube channel, and now I'm out of high school, so now I do the access the wheel. Yeah. Um, my next question is based. Based on what you have seen when it comes to disability and disability do you think we are making progress towards a more inclusive world or not? So I think um, we are making some progress, yes. Um, there's, there are strides being made, and yet at the same time, I feel like we're not as far as we should be right now, right? It's 2020 yep. and people with disabilities should have a lot more access and they should have so many more opportunities than that they have. Um, even just, you know, in, in physical places, it's not always accessible right. or um, not always easy to access for different disabilities. And so I think um, big picture, we haven't made as many strides as we could or should, but in the smaller areas and even just like you said, you know, you're starting your YouTube channel and in small areas, I think there's um, a lot of us who are starting to open the conversation with people who are around us and close to us. And so in those small ways, I think there's a lot of progress being made. Um, it's kind of just like, uh, you know, little by little and with like the feet on the ground kind of movement, I think that there is progress. But I also think that there's so much more that um, you know, from a higher level, that needs to change and could be changing to make things more accessible and inclusive. Definitely, yeah. There's so much that we need to be doing, but we aren't doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. In your opinion, what are some ways society can become more inclusive for those who have disabilities? 
Um, I definitely think that some ways people in society can become more inclusive is to really just, um, number one, like realize that there are so many people with so many different disabilities and to, like you said, not judge them and not label somebody and not make assumptions based on what you see because that doesn't, you, you can't know it all just based on what you see. And so you have to stop making assumptions. And um, I talk a lot about that. I think there's two different emotions that a lot of people come to when they see somebody with a disability and it's fear or pity. They fear the unknown. They're afraid of what's different. Um, they think that person must be bad or there's something wrong or they're contagious or whatever. And then the next one is pity. They just feel so sorry and your life just can't be um, as great or whatever. You know, we get a lot of comments um, on our TikToks about Noel and people are well-meaning. They mean it well, but they're like, oh, I feel so sorry for her. Her life must be so bad. Right. And I'm like, well, you don't know. Like, actually, her life may be way better than yours. You don't even know. Right. And, um, and so I think if, um, as society, if we can let go of those two emotions of that fear, and um, you let go of fear by learning, right? You have to right. learn, yeah. equip yourself with knowledge, and then let go of that pity, too. And that also comes from learning. That comes from understanding what somebody else's life is like. And so just like what you're doing on your YouTube channel, it's educating people and letting them see what your life is like. And then they can actually understand you better without making a judgment. Oh yeah, totally. I have a lot of people who, when I meet someone, I'm like, okay, I have a disability. I need a little extra help, but I am capable of telling you what I need how to do it when I need it. So all I need you to do is listen and do what I direct you to do and we'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What, what is your biggest piece of advice for people who want to approach someone who has a disability or want to be friends with them but may not know how the about it. Um, well, I guess my, uh, my advice on that, how to approach somebody um, who has a disability to make friends with them would be just how you approach anybody to make friends, right? You make mm -hmm. eye contact, yeah. you smile, um, you know, you ask what their name is, you start to ask questions. Um, and so I think that the biggest thing is, again, what I said is just acknowledging people and seeing them for who they are. And, um, you know, there, there's a, a saying that says, don't stare, like, or, I mean, it, as a parent, we often teach our children, don't stare. And I'm like, no, instead of teaching, don't stare, teach, ask a name, teach to say hello. And so just as adults, we need to do that. We need to make eye contact and approach people and say hello. And one thing is people ask a lot is like, well, who do I ask? Who do I talk to the person or the caregiver? And it's like, you always talk to the person because you don't know um, if they do or don't need help communicating. And if they do need help, then their caregiver will help. But you have to acknowledge and speak to that person, um, you know, first. And, um, but really you just have to, I think the biggest thing is getting over yourself and your own insecurities yeah. and acknowledging that person and looking them straight in the eyes and telling them, hello. Yeah, so when I'm out in public, people often talk to whoever I'm with and not me. And I end up going, why are you talking to me? You know, so I end up being like, hello, my name is Anna. It's very nice <laughs> to meet you. I, I don't want talking automatically without them talking to me. Because yeah. that's going to be the only way people know that they could be talking to me. Yeah, and even if like, because some people too are nonverbal and it doesn't mean that they don't understand. It's just that they can't actually, um, you know, they need help saying it. And with, with my daughter, Noelle, she has a paralyzed vocal cord. Um, but other than that, she can talk. It's just, she's not loud. So I do have to like, you know, tell people what she said, but same with you. She's like, oh, why are they talking to me? Like I'm sitting right here. Like, <laughs> talk to me. Yep. Um, what if you've been a piece of advice for parents who wish to teach their children how 
to interact with those who have disabilities. Yeah, and I love this question. This is one of my favorite questions to answer is, um, you know, what's the number one thing I would teach parents to help teach their kiddos uh, about people with disabilities? And the number one thing I always say is you have to front load. You have to talk about, um, learn about, read books about people who have disabilities and who are different before you ever meet them. Because if you're, if, you know, if a kiddo sees somebody like my daughter, in a store for the first time and she's in a wheelchair and like I said she has a trach and a ventilator and all of that that's going to be a really hard time to try to then teach my next points oh, yeah. because you have no basis for you know this child has no understanding whereas if you've read books with them about people with disabilities and special needs they can ask those questions and they can see that people are different you can have those conversations in a place where their questions won't come across it so rudely, you know, in front of that person. Yeah. And then that way, if and when you meet somebody in public with a disability, you can reference back to the book. Um, I've done it with my own younger two children. We met a little boy who was blind and he used a cane and I was able to reference back to like, oh yeah, remember in such and such book, the little boy had a cane. And then they were able to, you know, kind of understand and put the pieces together. Whereas if there wasn't that, it would be really uncomfortable to have that conversation um, in front of people because kids are just curious, right? Like they're just curious. We're all curious. We all have questions. We just stop asking them out loud at some point, but kids don't. They ask it out loud. And so it's not so much that their questions are hurtful, but for you as the parent, it's gonna be a lot better of an experience if you've talked about it beforehand and you can kind of have that conversation, continue the conversation. Um, and so my number one thing is definitely read books, watch um, shows, you know, like your YouTube channel, those kind of things. If kids are seeing that people are different and how they live life, then when they actually meet somebody in person, they'll have some reference and understanding of that. Oh yeah, totally. I see many turning out in public all the time and they must keep they, they, their parents don't even want to educate them. They would talk to them, don't do this, don't, don't do anything. And I'm like, you know, if you mistaught them how to interact, you would not be saying that right now. <laughs> but who do you? Yeah. Um, what is your biggest piece of, piece of advice for a new Hesperny parent? Ooh, my biggest advice for a new special needs parent would definitely be to try to find some community, um, try to find some other parents. Uh, even if your kiddos don't have the same diagnosis, it's amazing what it feels like to be in a group of people who just kind of understand um, your challenges and what you're going through, uh, because it is a very unique experience and not many people um, can fully understand. Now, after quarantines happened, I'm able to explain to people that having a child, um, you know, having a child with special needs, when, when I first found out, it was just like quarantine, right? It was like I was going about my daily life, like I was going to have a baby, you know, everything was quote unquote normal. And then like at the drop of a hat, everything changed. And it just felt like my whole world crumbled kind of like how people have felt, you know, in these last couple months. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and it's like, and with this, um, you know, with quarantine, at least we are experiencing this together, and we can, um, you know, we can kind of communicate and find that community with each other because we're all kind of going through the same thing. And that's how I feel about having those other people, uh, those other parents with kids with special needs, it's like that same community, whereas even though you're all experiencing it differently, you kind of have this common thread of like our world crumbled at some point and we're just trying to do the best we can now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that because I feel like what, whoever you are, if you have a community that you can be involved in, it really helps. Yeah. The, the people that understand and the people that know what you're knowing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being on my YouTube channel. You're so I'm, welcome. I'm so happy I met to meet you. Yeah, I'm me a, too. I'm a huge 
me on the you and Noel and your TikTok. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. It was so good to yeah. meet you. You too. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.